Hi guys. So um, I'm posting this a little late, but um, I'm going to catch you up to speed as far as Thursday is concerned. Um, I got two main points to go over. Uh, the first point, uh, when you look at Schoology, I have on Wednesday set up the daily writing prompt template. I'm going to revise that because there's some confusion. I'm hearing a lot of feedback that it doesn't make sense. So I want to simplify it even more than what my plan was. So um, if you've already created a prompt for the image of the gentleman on the street leaning on the, the pole, um, save that. We'll come back to that next week. I want to revisit over the weekend and find a way of simplifying the whole daily prompt response okay ideally i will say this ideally what i want is for you to have a collection of writing for a week and you select the best to post that so um we'll work through that uh now as far as today's concern uh, you'll notice there's a file in here called review of deductive inductive and abductive reasoning. Uh, that was one of the main points I made for today. So this would be rather quick. Um, it was Today was mainly a, a lecture-based class. Let me open this up. There. OK, so um, what we have. I start out explaining deductive and inductive. Last semester, I went over this. Okay, so this is a slight review period. I'm taking it in a different uh, uh, manner so that you get a better, a stronger grasp of what these two uh, argument styles are about. Primarily, the reason I'm focusing on the, this for a few weeks, uh, in college, depending on your major, it uh, your writing style and your... Uh, use of argument style is going to be controlled by your major. So to put it another way, if you're in uh, business, you'll more likely be, will more likely use an inductive argument. Or if you're going into law, that's more inductive. Whereas the humanities and history are more deductive. Okay. So, um, Again, there are three types I'm focusing on the on deductive and inductive right now. Uh, so both styles of deductive and inductive are important. They're both equally important. They both, and the thing that I focus on mainly, they both produce strong thesis statements. It's just a matter of how you defend your thesis is the, the factor here. You use different methods for defense. Um, you're both both systems, you're arriving at conclusions assumed as a defendable truth. It all is a focus on establishing a truth that everyone can agree on, or at least agree to see your side of the equation and want to talk more. Okay. So uh, looking at deduction, this is primarily what you've been taught since ninth grade. It is the humanities and English class style of argument. Okay, um, You're drawing conclusion from all the evidence that you propose. All the valid truths that you establish add up to a specific point of reference. So if you look at a general MLA style paper, at the paper overall, the opening of the paper will start with general observations and the end of the paper, your conclusion has a specific point, a specific main um, argument that you're addressing, a truth you want to establish. Okay. Another way of looking at it, your introduction paragraph likewise starts out with general observations general ideas of the topic you're discussing, and then you close out with your specific thesis. Okay. So your conclusion thesis or conclusion statement is guaranteed to be a truth 
because it's all based on valid evidence. And that's the key point. Your evidence is defendable of all your proposals. Uh, one of the things I often talk to students about is that they'll provide these ideas, but they're not defending them adequately enough to establish their point of view is a truth. Okay, so keep that in mind, even with literature, when we get into analyzing literature, you want to prove to me that your observations are establishing a truth and not just a vague notion. Okay, so this is deduction. Um, next, oh, I'm sorry, here's an example. Uh, I won't read the whole thing, but basically if you look at the topic sentence, it introduces the point of an island nation in the Pacific. A couple of years ago, they had provided um, a hospital, an international ad agency, aid agency donated a hospital. So this editorial style argument is suggesting um, such plan, um, such proposals of creating these hospitals um, are a waste of money because many foreign aid projects fail because of poor planning, thereby wasting huge amounts of money. So the whole point of the, oh, I'm sorry. So the whole point of this paper will be to, to defend this idea. But this is the truth that is proposed by all of these facts here within the paragraph. You're deducing from all this information this thesis statement in blue. Okay, now induction is going to do the same thing that a deductive point does, except it's doing it backwards. Induction starts with specific facts and closes with a generality. So another way of looking at this, when you're using an inductive method, your topic sentence is your thesis statement. And everything underneath that thesis statement, all the sentences that compose the first paragraph are backing up that point, explain the direction you're taking the paper. So um, another way of looking at it, I'll review value claims tomorrow. A value claim is an observation you have about a, a subject off the top of your head. It's your personal opinion. So you start out with the opinion and you provide three quick sentences that back up the opinion that show the direction you're taking the paper. Um, and that's as far as humanities are concerned. Uh, so with these type induction, personal experiences work well. So that's why moral or ethical themes work best for this type of argument. Um, now, what you're doing, you're moving from the personal experience to the global experience. So the personal experience is going to be the specific fact. Something happened to you on an ethical level that you want to examine, and you'll explain it in terms that the whole world can understand and would want to apply to their lives in a general sense. Uh, the reason the closure is more general, if you look at moral and ethical issues, every one of us is a uh, diverse creature. Uh, uh, no one has exactly the same copy of ideals that you individually have. Uh, so what it comes down to, your view, your, mor your morality, your ethics, although they can be slightly partially applied to other people in the world, it won't embrace the entire global community. We're not all the same figure, all the same person. Okay, so with that in mind, the conclusion you come, you result with in this type of paper is probably true because we all can agree that some moral issues 
are probably true and we probably should approach them. Um, but each one of us has a different degree of, of expectation of how far we will take that truth. Okay. So that's induction. Now to take this up another notch to complex it just a little bit more, we have what's called abduction. Abduction works best for medical diagnoses. It also works best for jury decisions. Um, in this case, the result of an abduction reasoning is possibly true. So notice how I phrase that. You want to look for a possible truth. Um, so again, a doctor will have an individual in front of them and going by the tests they've run, one doctor could say that the patient has cancer. So the patient wants to get a second opinion. They go see a second doctor. The doctor will see the same test results, see the same ailments, have the, see the same conclusions, and they could say, well, it's not cancer, it's not a tumor, it could be just stomach issues. The, the dietary uh, eating habits of the patient are all wrong. Okay, so you have the same problem, the same test results, but through personal observations, the conclusion is different. Um, so not, again, just like induction, not all results fit the same person. Uh, what's interesting about abduction, the first sentence here, abduction basically combines attributes from both deduction and induction. It's your both, bo all three are gathering up valid, um, defendable evidence and using that to back up a thesis statement. Um, but in this case, not all medical diagnoses are going to be actualities. So you've got to hope you have a really good doctor who can see through all the test results and see all the physical ailments that you're going through in order to diagnose your problem. Okay. And uh, the other thing to keep in mind, as far as medicine is concerned, there's more than one way to cure an issue. You have to look at the individual in front of you and see what possibilities exist for that one individual. So again, that's why this is all about possibilities. Um, I do have a slight example here. Uh, it's basically about the cor coronavirus disease pandemic that's been going on in current times. Uh, so you have these facts about the situation. It's all about this um, opid overdoses is the main focus of the paper. But um, they're saying there's a discrepancy with all this information. Um, and this sentence in blue is the thesis. And that is, this is an actual product. If you go to this website, this URL, it will take you to the full article. Um, and they go into more medical detail about the situation. But the structure here is you've got this evidence that results in this thesis statement that's possibly true, that can possibly apply to the United States as a whole. Okay, so um, that's a quick review of the three styles. Okay. Um, again, tomorrow we'll go over value claims one more time, review that. Uh, as of yet, you don't have an assignment that'll be popping up in the near future. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. If anything, problems or issues are coming up, let me know. And we'll talk about that in the near future. Hope you all are being safe.